Now time for our seventh speaker of the night. She's been on this stage before. She's passionate about safe streets, active mobility, people-centric spaces. And speaking of being people-centric, Brett Burgey had a close COVID contact recently and opted to present remotely. So here she is. This is opening day for Calgary Central Library. To mark the occasion, the city closed the road and programmed the space with food trucks, a photo booth, live music, and a pleasant scene through which to approach the library. Does this road look anything but close to you? See how we are oriented to think about streets as places for cars? This road isn't closed. Neither is this one. They're open. They're just open for people-centric activity. Cities, by definition, are where people live in density. People. But since the 1920s, we have oriented our laws, regulations, zoning, land use, budget allocations, and transportation departments to suit the automobile. In other words, we have built cities for cars. The average car in 2022 weighs 4,000 pounds and carries on average 1.4 people. Here are nine cars occupying the carriageway, the length of the block. In this photo, there are 36,000 pounds of steel, aluminum, plastics to carry 12.6 people. This is not just wasteful, it's absurd. Cars are incredibly space inefficient and they're bloating. New designs result in growth in weight and volume every year. Cars are literally overextending the reams of valuable space allocated to them. It's worth noting that three buildings abutting the lane have well-used entries or exits directly accessible from the lane, but no apparent space allocated to people coming and going. Consider how people-oriented space invites a different behavior, an uptick in people moving by micro-mode devices, bicycles, mobility devices, scooters. Here's a parking problem cities and towns would love to have. This is a bike corral in Banff, Alberta, full. It's situated amid a pedestrianized zone that covers nearly all of its main streets. We have handed over an abundance of space to cars, and while we don't always say so, we effectively make that space exclusive use. This parcel of land adjacent to Calgary Central Library is earmarked for cars. We have paint markings, curbs, and signage that we are programmed to read as space for cars, whether the lot is mostly empty or full. But space is contested. When we remove the markings and signs, it invites new perspectives and creative uses of the spaces in our neighborhoods. This is the same lot, just from a different perspective. Here, a group of children are chirping around having serendipitous, unstructured fun, and they feel safe because the parcel of land is fully surrounded by physical barriers. Cities should be pleasurable and safe experiences by foot or by micromode devices. Urban places are, after all, where people live in density. They are our habitat. On average in Calgary, a pedestrian is struck by a motorist every day, half of them in crosswalks. Citywide, pedestrians who are struck by motorists are found to be in the right of way 70% of the time. This goes up to 90% where traffic signals and flashing beacons are present. We can make cities safer. It doesn't have to be this way. This is a protected intersection in Canmore. Notice how the crosswalks and bike crossings are situated well into the turn radius. This allows motorists a full view of these vulnerable spaces unobstructed by the A-frame between the windshield and the door windows. Also notice the positioning of the traffic signals on the near side rather than the far side of the intersection. Position the traffic signals in this way forces motorists by design to queue without obstructing the crosswalks and the bike crossing. This ensures that the crossings are left clear every time. If a driver overshoots the stop bar, they have to assume a contorted and uncomfortable position to see the traffic lights. Here's another design intervention at a downtown intersection in Edmonton. The pedestrian scramble, as it is known, provides a traffic light phase through which only people move, not cars. This also addresses an inequity because people can cross diagonally, effectively making a turn through the intersection in one phase, just as cars have been able to do for the past 100 years. When we design with people in mind, we can minimize conflict between different street users. We can design out a lot of mistakes. We can create multi-mode transportation system that is forgiving of our mistakes. So when crashes do happen, it doesn't have to mean serious injury or the forfeiture of a life. To do this and to do it well, we have to pay particular attention to where different modes mix. And when design fails, we must be willing to evaluate and implement new solutions that work to prevent conflict and allow our streets to be safer for everyone. We have to really study the issues. We need to be willing to adopt solutions from other jurisdictions who can show evidence of success as Camor did with its protected intersection. We must broaden our focus. It's not enough to make our transportation network safer. 
they must also feel abundantly safe. Our pathway system is a separate micro mode transport facility, but it is designed primarily as a leisure amenity. So it moves through city parks and river bank spaces that are pitch black after dark. Are we viewing safety and the provision of amenities through a feminist lens? By contrast, consider this car park facility. Its main purpose is to host empty automobiles, bright as a beacon. Notice how the facade allows for cars and people to be visible from the street and adjacent buildings. This is a design that considers how to make people feel safe. Calgary operates and maintains nearly 17,000 lane kilometers within city limits, yet ideas that seek to repurpose tiny fractions of space for uses other than driving or stowing empty automobiles are met with immense opposition and backlash. Do cars need access to every street all of the time? Do we need, we need to foster better spatial intelligence, deciding where cars are appropriate and where they are not, where motorist throughput is maximized and where it is not, where fast moving traffic is appropriate and where it is not. We need to make room for other purposes on some of our streets, some of the time or even all of the time. Space is contested, but we quell dissent. We say the matter is settled. At any given time, up to 50% of the population does not drive. People who are too old, people who are too young, people who have certain disabilities, people who do not have access to a private automobile, people who choose not to drive. Throwing the vast majority of our transportation dollars into one mode does not make sense. Our car centricity is abundantly irrational. It limits too much space to single use, leaving people outside of cars excluded and vulnerable. It's time to turn the ignition off for some trips and in some spaces. When we make space for people's centricity in cities, we are left with modal choice and beautiful spaces with which to interact and make better, more creative use of. Neighborhoods can become destinations. Streets can be more vibrant with foot traffic, with shops and cafes that spill into the public realm. We can make cities safer. We can make them more beautiful and inviting. We can make them more active, healthy, and vibrant.